You can't be rich, right? Because if you're rich, they figure you can pay for it yourself. But, but if you if you make uh, less than if your your family income is less than fifteen thousand dollars a year, there's no charge for this. They ask for a voluntary uh, copay. If you make up to thirty-seven thousand dollars a year uh, as a couple, you are still eligible for this benefit, and they will charge you a copay. And the copay can be as low as seventeen dollars a month or as high as $140 a month. So now remember, you're talking about up to six hours of services a week. So that's 12, 24, um, but say 24 hours of services a month, right? And the typical charge for these kinds of services is about 20, more than $20 an hour, right? So that'd be, four, that'd be about $500 a month. And you're looking at a copay of between $17 and $140 a month. So you're talking about a significant benefit for folks who just need a little help, right? Who just need a little help. And most people are gonna qualify for it because of those income levels. Frank and Mary qualify for that. Frank and Mary don't qualify for the no pay, right? But they qualify for the moderate on his social security and hers and his pension. So just be aware of that benefit. And the access point for that is, is the ASAP, right? Remember, Elder Services of the Cape and Islands. So you have to start there. Next slide. <clears throat> now, if you, are, if you need uh, some more services than that, and if you can demonstrate to the, to the Veterans Administration that you are not driving anymore, you can't use this program and still drive around, right? Um, then, then you probably are eligible for the Veterans Benefit. Now, some of you folks were here last month because we were talking about the, v I guess it was earlier this month, right? Because we were, it was last month, all right. Um, I just I love it here so much. They all flow together, right? So so um, you may be aware of this benefit, but I'm briefly just going to go th go through these rules because many many people here. Well, let's, let me let me see how many how many in the audience here are either veterans or the spouses of veterans or the widows of veterans. Yeah, see, from for this generation, it's pretty much a lot of people, right? So you kind of want to know about this, and I'm going to run through this quickly. The goal of this exercise, by the way, is not to have you remember everything here, but just to, to have you kind of take a note, oh, gee, I, I need to know more about that, right? Because you're going to be able to see this again. It's going to be on cable. It's Martha's Vineyard Cable, so it's going to be on cable like 20 times, right? And, and, and then you can also upload it. So the VA benefit, briefly. Next slide. You are a veteran eligible for this benefit, the benefit called aid and attendance. If you are homebound, that is, you're not driving around and... You served um, 90 days in the military, active service, can't just have been in the guards, and one day of those has to have been during a period of war. You do not have to have served overseas. You just have to meet those two criteria, and you can't have been dishonorably discharged. You can be less than honorably discharged, just not dishonorably discharged. And just to make one note, which and the person who, who I had last month is really, in my opinion, the state expert on this, a woman named Patty Surveys. Um, and sh as she mentioned, the, the Second World War didn't end when the, when, the, when the Germans surrendered or when the bomb was dropped. It ended in December 31st, 1946. So if you served, yeah, I saw one person go, ooh, that's interesting. So if you served 90 days and one of them was between December 7th, 1941, we all know that day, and December 31, 1946, you qualify for this. Next slide. Um, the benefits are very large, right? And they apply, once again, if you are homebound, you, if you are a veteran, this benefit can be as much as $2,054 per month. Now, the goal of this benefit is to supplement your income up to that amount. It's like SSI, Supplemental Security Income. It's supposed to, to keep you from becoming poor. But what's important about this benefit is that if your doctor certifies <coughs> that you need home care, then all those home care costs are legitimate deductible costs from your income, 
So if you're paying significant home care, like in this situation, you need more than these six hours a week. You need, if you need substantially more, right, then all of those costs that you're paying per month can be subtracted from that $2,054 a month. So if you've got a thousand dollars, if you're Frank and Mary, and your total income is, is, is well, what was it, it was $23,000 a month, but you've got um, $1,500 a month in home care, right, then all of a sudden you're going to get a check from the government for five or six hundred dollars a month to help you stay home. Next slide. In order to qualify for that, you have to add up all your income. We just talked about the fact it's all your income. So it's your gross social security, it's your gross pension, it's rental income, it's everything. Next slide. Uh, but, but, back slide, back one. But it's minus what are referred to, in, in this is a mouthful, as regularly occurring unreimbursed medical expenses. Regularly occurring, don't try to you know, write that down, but unreimbursed medical expenses. But remember, the significance of this is that this includes home care. Usually, for mass health purposes, for example, for Medicare purposes, home care expenses are not countable as medical expenses. In this program, they are. Next slide. Um, there is an asset test. You have to show, if you're the veteran or the spouse of a veteran, that in the absence of these benefits, you're going to run out of money before you die, so that there's a calculation in doing that. There is a myth that there is an asset ceiling of $80,000. That is incorrect. The asset ceiling really is based on this calculation. So you really want to have somebody do that calculation for you of whether you have enough money. Um, oftentimes, people have been able to qualify with, with cash as much as $120,000 to $150,000. This asset test does not count the house, right? Does not count the house. So in Frank and Mary's situation, right? The house was worth three, with, worth was it three four hundred thousand dollars? All their other stuff was three hundred twenty-five. They very way may, he may very well be able to qualify for this benefit, especially if he's younger and can therefore show that otherwise the amount of money he has isn't going to last until he dies. So and finally, there is no look back period. The famous look back period that you all know about regarding mass health. There is no look back period for purposes of this program. Uh, if you've got someone you can trust, right? Not everyone does. But if you do, you could Frank and Mary could transfer their assets to Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. and qualify for this benefit the next day to the extent that their assets were otherwise going to be over. Next slide. So that's the VA benefit. Once again, it's something that you want to look at if you are, if someone is homebound and a veteran and, and needs quite a bit more um, uh, um, day services or home care services than those that would be provided through the EOEA programs that I talked about. Next is Medicare. Um, how many of you know, this is like a little quiz, that you can get Medicare to provide services at home uh, even though you haven't been in the hospital? Did you know that? How many, raise your hand if you knew that. Yeah, now most people, and by the way, I didn't either, you know, until I started doing these presentations and learned about this. I always thought you had to spend like so many days in the hospital, and then if it, and you were on Medicare, because because the idea behind Medicare in general is that it's health, it's supposedly it's health insurance, and so in order to get the benefit, I always thought you had to get sick, and they kind of defined sick, I thought, as going to the hospital. Wrong. That is incorrect. Right. So can you talk a little bit about the 60-day plan? Sure. Um, I'm Kathleen Samways. I'm with Vineyard Nursing Association. She talks slower than I do. <laughs> uh, and um, we are the um, certified Medicare uh, care delivery organization on the Vineyard. We um, the, use these 60-day care plans to um, develop a plan of care with you and with your doctor so that you have a period of time to recuperate or recover from something that requires you to be homebound, again, that homebound word is um, is one that we keep hearing over and over again, and that you need some kind of skilled care uh, in order to recuperate from uh, being ill. So uh, to follow up on Arthur's point about not having had to be in the hospital, you can get a referral from your doctor's office. You can even call in a family member or yourself can call in and say, I, I'm feeling like I need some assistance, and we can follow up with your doctor, we can follow up with your family member, we can um, develop a plan of care, go out, assess your needs, see what's going on with you, and um, see if you do in fact need some skilled nursing, 
um, and if you meet the homebound qualification. If not, we can help you make some other arrangements, get you connected with the um, elder services or some of the other community resources. But the 60-day plan of care is the amount of time that Medicare gives, you, gives us to um, develop this plan and basically carry out the plan and sort of, I can name that tune in how many notes. Um, so we, we start out by saying, okay, in 60 days, this is what we think that um, Frank and Mary, Paul and Mary. Frank and Mary. Uh, can, um, can accomplish, or Mary maybe, um, can accomplish in 60 days. And then if we don't meet that goal in 60 days, then we go back to Medicare and say, you know what, we think we need another 60 days or we think we need another 30 days so we then can extend that episode uh, or go into a new episode if we need to. So that's the 60-day plan of care model that uh, Medicare uses for us to deliver home care. So two questions. Uh, first, what is skilled care? And second, um, is, is there any home care component to this if you do need skilled care? Okay, so skilled care is, next slide please is skilled, that. skilled nursing. Hey, I, don't I, know looked my, I looked at my presentation. That was a um, test for her. <laughs> uh, skilled nursing care, which includes assessment, um, and then any sort of delivery of care that goes with um, a problem that might be identified, a wound or, a, or um, medication management or um, some other uh, uh, problem that may emerge from an assessment, uh, get identified from an assessment. Uh, skilled physical therapy services for balance, um, strength, um, what we call deconditioning, or what, just plain weakness from maybe not moving around enough, so you need to get to a new level of being strong and moving around the house, not just going, you know, how much do you walk chair to chair, you know, chair back to chair back. Um, so we want to make sure that people are strong and, and um, healthy and able to move around their homes. Occupational therapy, which is not trying to get you a job, but um, uh, making sure that you're able to do the, the work of your life, let's say, the work of living. So that means um, helping to take, uh, taking care of yourself, um, helping you maybe with some of the safety um, assessment that um, Arthur was talking about, making sure you've got the grab bar, you know, we're not using those towel bars in the bathroom, right? We've got real grab bars that are anchored in studs. These sound familiar. Anybody ever say this to you before? Um, I'm sure you've heard it. Um, so the OT can come in and help assess the environment, help uh, uh, people um, break down a task and then build it back up again so that they become stronger and more capable within that task. 